So please unmute me also. Are we good to go? Can you hear me there in the hall? Yes, sir. Yeah, you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. The secret of getting ahead is to get started. A warm good morning to all the dignitaries, members of faculty, to all the participants present here for the webinar. Let's begin today's webinar on impact of artificial intelligence on industry, society, and economics. Artificial intelligence would be the ultimate search engine that would understand everything on that. I take the privilege to introduce our keynote speaker of the session, Mr. Abid Ali Nimachwala. He is a magnanimous personality of our Malwa region. Mr. Nimachwala completed his bachelor's in engineering in electronics and communication engineering EC from NIT Raipur and master's degree in industrial management from IIT Bombay. He joined TCS in 1992. Mr. Nimachwala was involved with TCS for 23 years, 
and held top positions like Vice President and Global Head TCS BPO Services. He was awarded CEO of the Year in 2010 and 2012. Mr. Nimajwala joined Wipro in April 2015 as COO, Chief Operating Officer, and was subsequently appointed as CEO and Managing Director. Currently, he is the board member of Texas Economic Development Corporation and board member of World Affairs Council of Dallas. So, moving further, it gives me immense pleasure to invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mansour University, Dr. Brigadier Bharat Singh Rawat, for delivering the welcome address. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good morning, children and faculty members. On behalf of our Chancellor Sri Narendra Nahata and all of you at Mansoor University, it's my proud privilege to welcome Sri Abid Ali Nimachwala ji. I'm extremely thankful to him for having accepted our invitation and consented to give this address on artificial intelligence. You know, when I first spoke to him, the acceptance was instantaneous. And I still remember the words very, very correctly. He said, anything for Malwa reason, always and every time. So such is the belongingness and dedication which we have in him. And I think all of us should take that inspiration from him. So children, you cannot have a better role model than him. Because he Janoon Mehnat say onone wo achieve kiya hai what every technocrat dreams to achieve. So my suggestion to you, all of you is dream, dream big, but have the passion and dedication to achieve it. And all of you can do it. You have a role model and all of you can do it. This is what I wanted to tell you coming to AI as such. <clears throat> See, every age has its scientific uh, discoveries and inventions. Today, we are on the cusp of a technological revolution uh, with emerging technologies like AI, IoT, robotics. But while the country like US and China have moved much ahead, our country needs to pick up because those countries have got a robust infrastructure and R&D systems. So our government has now realized the importance and is encouraging startup and R&D and NASCOM and Niti Aayog have been interested uh, with these uh, responsibilities and a special task force have been made for encouraging all this. Number of educational institutes have started bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. And uh, for your information, uh, we at Mansour University are also starting from this year a bachelor's degree in artificial intelligence. But I don't want this to be just an, a degree in artificial intelligence. I want Mansour University be, uh, City to be a cradle of artificial intelligence startup and research and development. We want to be a little different. We want to be a cradle of leadership, cradle of uh, research and development and artificial intelligence in the whole of Central India. So that we alone cannot do. For this, I'll always look forward to Mr. Neemach Walaji for his support, constant guidance and association with us. I hope he'll comply with that. And uh, so we are very, very fortunate to begin uh, this initiative on the birth anniversary of Sri Vishweshwaraya Ji, which we, in India is celebrated as an ingenious day. So you can, we cannot have a more auspicious uh, day than this to launch the artificial intelligence at Mansour University. So to enlighten ourselves on this day, I hand you over to Nimach Walaji and I request all of you to put your hands together and give him a warm welcome. So can you have a big round of applause? Thank you. Thank you very much. May please. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Vice Chancellor uh, Brigadier Rawat. First of all, thank you uh, for virtually inviting me back to my hometown and motherland. And as you rightly said, uh, you know, it's always an honor 
and a pleasure to give back to what is there is no equivalent word than matrabhumi in yeah. english so so you will uh, you know you will hear both hindi and english words uh, from me uh, members of the faculty i think uh, mansoor university and the vision that i have heard from uh, your vice chancellor is really very encouraging to create the cradle of artificial intelligence in india uh, in mansoor is is uh, something which is uh, not only very ambitious but it is also very timely and the need of the hour because uh, i think as a country we, we are behind china we are behind america we are behind a few other places and especially that is not acceptable simply because we are the intellectual capital of the world um and uh, dear students young men and women of malwa and uh, it's uh, a pleasure to address you and uh, what better could be a topic than talk to you about the social economic impact of artificial intelligence on our society so what i will do is in the next a uh, uh, 30 minutes or so present some of my thoughts on artificial intelligence and then uh, i'll be very happy to take questions and address uh, specific uh, areas that you want to get more enlightened in the world of artificial intelligence so the first question is what is artificial intelligence and the very simple way to put it is it is intelligence that is created using machines that for the most part mimics the human intelligence so you know if you look at how human intelligence is created the best way to look at it is how an infant a young human being learns aapke ghar mein bachcha hai agar so you know since the child is born the child starts observing and observation is nothing but gathering data and then processing data and then the child starts doing what it sees the parents what it sees the uh, members of the household do i remember very well that uh, when my son mustafa was about 5 years old i brought him a toy cell phone and uh, he used to roam around the house using that toy cell phone and speaking in it i think he was even younger than 5 years because you know he used to um, just say whatever he wanted into the phone but the amazing part for me was every time after he you know if uh, this was his toy cell phone every time after he finished the conversation he used to do this and i never understood why he did this till i realized that i had a phone which had a flip uh, cover to it and every time i used to finish talking to disconnect the phone i used to use my cheek to close the flip uh, cover and disconnect the call and that is the power of learning through observation learning through data and artificial intelligence does nothing but digests all the data that it gets and then it is it gets better in taking decisions and continue to learn so while artificial intelligence is very similar to human intelligence it is not a subject that is new 35 years back when i was in college as it was mentioned i did uh, electronics and communication and then industrial management i had taken a course in artificial intelligence in those days at iit bombay while there was the theory of artificial intelligence but the computing power with cloud computing with uh, cheaper storage which can store so much of data with uh, everything to do with iot's and sensors and collection of uh, images collection of uh, formal informal data all of that was not possible perhaps the entire power the computing power of iit bombay's data center was pretty much less than or equal to an iphone 12 or iphone 
that you may have in your hand. And that is why at that time, artificial intelligence was merely a concept and it was very well depicted in movies like Star Wars for those who have seen those movies of the 90s and uh, late 80s and early 90s. Today, with cloud computing, with uh, large amount of storage available on the internet, with large amount of data being collected with various devices and sensors and cameras and IT systems generating so much of data, quantum computing coming to the fore, artificial intelligence has become a reality. So the other question that comes up is, how is artificial intelligence and what it does different from the computer programming that we have been doing since the 60s? The biggest difference is a computer program can go through an algorithm and execute the algorithm. What it cannot do is it does not have a feedback loop. It cannot learn and get better. So just to give you an example, if there is a computer algorithm and we teach the, com if, uh, the computer algorithm can do a deduction based on a workflow, it will go through and and or loops. It will go through yes and no questions and arrive at an answer. Two things happen in that. One is, if it arrives at a wrong answer, you can run that program thousand times and it will arrive at the same wrong answer. In artificial intelligence, if you tell the machine that the answer is wrong and this is the correct answer, the next time it will be intelligent enough to be able to handle what is called exceptions, which means a computer program always needs a human being to handle exceptions. An AI algorithm or an artificially intelligent machine will be able to learn and get better every time. That is how uh, artificial intelligence is able to play games like chess and go much better, very much like human beings, learning from the mistakes and getting smarter every time. The second thing that it does it, it is faster. So a computer may have to undergo an el entire algorithm. For example, if we write an algorithm for a computer to say, look, who could be the favorite actor of a 50 year old person? And then it has a linked list of all actors, right from Dilip Kumar, Rajesh Khanna, Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan, and uh, everybody else. It will have to apply deductive reasoning. Artificial intelligence can associate a genre, associate a stereotype with certain people and they could then immediately jump to the conclusion that if it is a 50 year old person, the most likelihood is that the favorite actor for that person is Amitabh Bachchan. So artificial intelligence is able to go directly to conclusions without necessarily having to go through all of the and and or loops, yes and no loops. And that is why artificial intelligence is faster. And in, these are the two respects in which AI differentiates itself from what we call as normal computer programming, which itself has automated the world uh, very, very well. And there are multiple areas in which artificial intelligence impacts business. The three areas which I kind of find the most impactful for artificial intelligence in business is number one, improving user experience. Number two, improving productivity. And number three, doing things that were impossible or very difficult to do in a normal business in the past. So very good example of how AI helps with uh, uh, user experience, improving user experience is Netflix. I'm sure a lot of you watch Netflix and the accuracy with which Netflix can perhaps tell you what is the next movie or the next uh, a show you should watch. As you keep watching it, it keeps getting better and better. And it gets to a point that you rather than looking up and searching various programs, you just click on uh, what it is showing you as the recommended watch for yourself. And it personalizes for every person in the household and things like this significantly improve user experience and because of the improved user experience it increases the loyalty of a customer to a business 
and that helps increase the business. The second area is improving productivity. The best example is automating repetitive tasks, you know, very well understood by robotics. Uh, things like agents and conversational bots. Today, artificial intelligence can have a conversation, help solve a problem, and all of this can perhaps take out a lot of human cost that is involved. It can increase the productivity, it can increase the speed at which businesses can deliver and then contribute directly to the profitability of the business. So the user experience helps with the revenue growth in the business. Productivity helps with the profitability of the business. And the third aspect is being able to do things which were historically unheard of. You know, self-driving cars is a very good example. The whole trucking industry, for example, especially here in the US, is for forecasted that in the next five years, self-driving trucks will completely disrupt the trucking industry. And because it doesn't need a driver, a truck doesn't need to rest. And so a truck can reach from one place to another in half the time, because the driver has to be given half the time to sleep and take rest and eat food and a self-driving truck or a robotic truck will not require any of those things. So brand new business models are created by artificial intelligence and uh, do things that could otherwise never have been done. Accounting is a very good example of doing that. Just to give you my example, at Wipro, we applied artificial intelligence to do revenue forecasting. Now the human mind, and I know all of you are engineers and a lot of you are very good at mathematics, but you will understand how hard it is to solve an equation beyond a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is a two variable equation. Beyond that, if you go, artificial intelligence is able to calculate multivariate functions uh, in, within milliseconds, within seconds. And revenue forecasting, when you do with a team of accountants, human beings, you are able to look at two or three variables that you use in a company like Wipro or IT services industry, you look at how many people do you have? What is the billing rate? How many people are on the bench? How many people are billable? You do some multiplication and arrive at a revenue forecast. When artificial intelligence algorithm was developed to do that, it started learning from the last 30, 40 quarters of revenue data, actual forecasts and re actual revenue that was reported by the company, which is all available in the company's ERP systems. And it started identifying newer variables that the human mind, even if it knew existed, could not incorporate in a multivariate equation. And finally, with about 18 months of training of that algorithm, it was able to predict the revenues of a quarter more accurately than a team of about 50 to 60 chartered accountants could do it, sitting in an uh, FPNA or financial planning and accounting team. So that is the power of AI, being able to improve user experience, being able to drive higher productivity and be able to do tasks that were not possible to be done by the human mind in the past. And that is why AI is impacting businesses so significantly. The social impact of AI is also very high. And right now I will talk about the social impact in terms of our ability to again do things which were hitherto quite difficult to do. One of the best examples in most Indian cities now is crime patrol. The ability to address uh, through sensors and cameras, image recognition, look at incidents and be able to quickly identify and solve a case. There is a very recent case in the newspapers where uh, there was an unfortunate incident in Bombay with a lady. She was raped and killed. And within a matter of hours, the police was able to find the culprit. It was because of all of the surveillance and facial recognition and artificial intelligence enabled uh, uh, computing that is available to now law enforcement agencies. The other thing that uh, in, in social circumstances that artificial intelligence is able to do very well is to do dangerous tasks, things that were uh, that are a risk to human lives. A very good example is uh, a couple of years back, right here in Dallas, where I live, there was a shooter who had a gun and he was shooting on a 
protest which was about black lives matter so non violent people were walking on the road protesting about a, something that they were very passionate about this shooter for whatever ideological reasons went with a gun and started shooting police identified the person the person ran into a garage and hid behind a car and he could be shooting more policemen if the policemen went to try to arrest him or uh, control him what the police did is sent an artificially intelligent robot the robot went inside the garage was able to neutralize shoot and kill the culprit and then the police could safely enter the garage and uh, make the arrest so things that are dangerous you know there are many other examples in bombay the bombay municipal corporation is using uh, intelligent robots to do cleaning cleaning of the sewerage system there were so many people who died going into the sewerage system simply because of the methane and the toxic gases that get created in the sewerage system but before every rainy season the sewerage system needs to be cleaned so a lot of beneficial uses of artificial intelligence both in business as well as in society let me talk to you about three or four real examples that will help you understand the power of artificial intelligence in about four areas where i see the largest impact that artificial intelligence is having the number one is healthcare artificial intelligence has the ability to change healthcare and make the world a much healthier place with preventing diseases curing diseases and more importantly bringing the kind of expertise that may exist in a new york or a bombay to the poorest part of the world or the further most part of the world one example again uh, which uh, was an experiment done by a company called top coder at the harvard uh, university and harvard medical college was around lung cancer so the second biggest killer in cancer after breast cancer is lung cancer especially for people who have smoking habits but for a lot of other people after a certain age lung cancer gets developed and the way lung cancer happens is that within the lungs as as we all know we have two lungs and two lobes of the lungs within the lungs there are parts of the lungs which get impacted by cancer and if that is not corrected then the person will ultimately die because those parts will keep expanding across the entire lung you have to do an imaging of the lung and a very expert oncologist or a lung cancer specialist doctor has to then demarcate the parts after doing imaging to identify exactly the part which has been infected by cancer and then you use a a, a therapy gun to be able to do a radiation therapy on the lung to kill that cancer from that part this is an activity of very high expertise because if the doctor marks larger parts of the lung larger than the infected portion then you will kill so much of the lung that the patient may die because you may overcorrect the problem on the other hand if the doctor marks smaller parts rather than the ones that have been impacted then the doctor is likely to leave cancer inside the patient and the patient may still die because the remaining parts which were not corrected may again grow cancerous and again start infecting the lung artificial intelligence was used to look at those images and delineate the parts in the lung and it was able to do with an accuracy higher than an expert oncologist and the interesting part about that is that you can run an artificial intelligence robot to do that out of a ct scan in mansoor or in bombay in new york or in nairobi in africa so it's not only about artificial intelligence being able to do it more accurately but it makes this kind of expertise available in the for this parts of the world which would otherwise not have this level of expertise and now once it goes into production something as complex as lung cancer can be cured using artificial intelligence in any part of the world another example is 
e-commerce and the fraud part of e-commerce. As I'm sure each one of you is a, a consumer of Flipkart or Amazon or any of the other e-commerce sites. Most of the purchases happen over there. Just to put in context, the amount of fraud that can happen on the e-commerce side is very high. Rather, businesses lose over 500,000 crores uh, in e-commerce frauds as, uh, as e-commerce expands and becomes the primary uh, way of uh, consumers buying goods and services over the internet or over the web. A very good example of applying fraud detection in e-commerce is how artificial intelligence is able to look at the behavior of every consumer in terms of what is the location of the consumer, what is the pattern of purchase, what is the type of things that a consumer purchases, how much of the browsing it does. So just as an example, if it finds inconsistency on any of those parameters, it would block the transaction. Just because e-commerce transactions happen instantaneously, you click a button, buy, put it in the cart, check out and make the payment. There is no time for somebody sitting in the back office as a human being to be able to do fraud detection. But artificial intelligence is able to do online. Just as an example, whenever my wife browses the internet to buy something, if somebody is using her ID and because it's a fraudster, the fraudster tries to do it quickly. And if the fraudster in five minutes uh, goes and buys something, artificial intelligence knows very well that Mrs. Neemachwala will look at three sites, will browse three different sites, look at uh, a large variety of uh, goods before she makes a purchase decision. So instead of 15 minutes, if that purchase took just one minute, it cannot be Mrs. Neemachwala, it has to be a fraudster. And that is the self-learning that artificial intelligence algorithms can do, which even a human being wouldn't be able to do sitting in the back office trying to do fraud detection in e-commerce. Another example is around logistics. Again, as the world becomes a global village, as travel, whether it is human travel, whether it is goods and services that move from place to place increases, the ability to automate, to forecast, again, e-commerce is a very good example where it is happening in India now with companies like Wellspun and Flipkart, where large warehouses are being created based on various seasons and various uh, demand patterns and population densities and demographics. Artificial intelligence is able to forecast what is the likely quantity that will be required to be sold just before Diwali or just before Eid or just before Ganesh Chaturthi festival and stock in the warehouse sufficient quantity. So many times as shopkeepers we realize that in a time when there is the season for a certain good or service, we are able to either get less quantity and then we lose business or we get more quantity and then we have to keep that for a whole year till the next season comes. AI is able to forecast some of these things as I talked about the revenue forecasting much, much more accurately. Similarly, of course, not yet in India, but in the US, there are fully automated warehouses where Amazon now delivers within hours. So if you order, for example, here in Dallas, if I order something on Amazon at three o'clock in the afternoon, it's very likely that I will get a delivery by six o'clock in the evening. This entire process is completely automated using artificial intelligence, including picking the item from the warehouse, putting it in a package, getting that entire packaging done, putting it on a drone, getting the delivery done. And sometimes I can even say when, you know, the equivalent of a signature based delivery, the drone will have a camera which will do image recognition and only deliver it to me if I am at home, if I've asked for a personal delivery over there. So this whole thing, is run by artificial intelligence and continuous data is collected to make it better and better, more efficient uh, through the entire logistics cycle. Um, I own a Tesla. It's a self-driving car. And the only thing I have to do in the car is in the navigation, I have, like a GPS, I have to put the address where I have to go. And then there is a click over there where I have to say navigate on autopilot. By putting the address, 
and clicking navigate on autopilot i can relax i can even technically read a book or watch a movie and it will take the car out from my garage and take me to the destination all by itself and it needs a ton of sensing you know every kind of technology whether it is iot whether it is cloud whether it is blockchain whether it is um uh quantum computing all of those get uh, involved in having a car drive and you know the statistics right now show that a self driven car is much safer than a car which is driven by a human being rather interestingly i'll tell you when i'm driving the car myself it is not on autopilot my children sitting in the car say that papa jab aap gaadi chalate ho to aap brake bade zor se marte ho when the tesla is driving on its own the braking and the pickup is much more gentler than what you do so that is the power of artificial intelligence similarly a lot of use in various industries but especially manufacturing industry i'm sure you see uh, a lot of uh, equipment in infrastructure you know the the large caterpillar equipment which can be given out on rent and the cost of the equipment for a day could be 40 50000 rupees per day using artificial intelligence you can proactively maintain that kind of an equipment which can save lakhs of rupees because once the equipment breaks down and then if you order a part and replace a part it could take 3 4 5 days of downtime by predicting that okay this machine has already lifted so much weight if it's an earth moving machine artificial intelligence can predict that after lifting say 500 tons of dirt this machine certain lever will break or certain uh, equipment will start uh, giving fault and before that happens it can proactively ask you to replace that equipment and that predictive maintenance can save a lot of downtime similarly in manufacturing lines there is this new concept of collaborative robots it's called cobots which a human being along with a robot can run an entire shop floor earlier where there were 100 workers required in the factory there could only be 10 workers and there also more than workers there engineers and then there could be 40 robots or cobots running an entire assembly line like a automobile manufacturing plant or a chemical manufacturing plant or a oil rig or many other things it enhances safety it improves cost and it ensures uh, higher quality talking of quality it's very interesting when a human being is put on a quality control in an assembly line looking at the same item being produced again and again and just physically inspecting it there is human fatigue which develops and there is a bigger likelihood that a human being may miss out on a poor quality item and let it go into packaging compared to a artificially intelligent robot and the artificially intelligent robot will not only catch it with more accuracy in quality control but it will be able to identify what is creating poor quality and have a feedback loop into the manufacturing process or into the design process to actually correct it at source so in a running dynamic assembly line a artificially intelligent robot could identify that if you are generating a a bolt for example and if the bolt is uh, having some problem on its chafing on the head it can send a signal back to the chafing machine and if there is a tool on the chafing machine on if it's a cpc tool or whatever is the manufacturing tool and there is a blade on it which is doing that chafing it can actually ask for the replacement of that blade which is creating a quality problem in the finished bolt at the end of the assembly line so not only it is more accurate not only it never sleeps never goes out for a smoke never breaks for chai and uh, lunch but also it is smarter in fixing the problem at source and as engineers all of you know that any error that is fixed early in the life cycle has a lower cost of quality compared to it being detected at quality control at the end of an assembly line so again an example of the power of uh, artificial intelligence so this was just to give you a sense of what uh, some of these uh, things which are, are done by artificial intelligence look like in business but i'm sure 
you hear what the downsides of why artificial intelligence could scare us because 30% of the jobs that we currently know will all get auto- automated by tw- 2030 now that the prediction is that the artificial intelligence will match human intelligence by 2040 or even earlier there are a ton of repetitive jobs especially in manufacturing just in the us about 20 million manufacturing jobs the total population of the us is about 300 million of which there is 200 million of working age population 20 million jobs is 10% jobs so it's a very big impact on the society and especially the risk is highest for repetitive jobs low end jobs which can be automated very quickly it could be across banks for example there are already banks now here where bank bank branches have no tellers the entire teller machine is an artificially intelligent machine you don't have a cashier you don't have a human being in an entire branch of a bank and the bank functions much more um uh, accurately much lower fraud and mistakes happen in the branch simply because it's all run by artificial intelligence so so uh, you know the impact on the society of artificial intelligence is both positive where you are able to do things faster you are able to reduce human errors it is available 24 by 7 it is better quality the people don't have to do dangerous work and hence their quality of life improves and a lot of tasks get uh, done automatically nobody has to do it at all but there are equally negative impacts and especially mass unemployment of course there are other issues like ethics of artificial intelligence and i can go into that if there is a question on it but you know it's exactly like a child if uh, the in the beginning i took the example of how a child learns in the household agar ghar mein sara member ghar ke galiyon se baat karte hain so guess what what is the first word that the child is going to speak that is exactly what happens in artificial intelligence so if you train artificial intelligence with data that is unethical the output of artificial intelligence will also be unethical and so that is what are issues of bias in artificial intelligence issues of social media and so on and so forth because a lot of these platforms use a lot of artificial intelligence so the question then comes how as young people you all prepare yourself for the future and obviously you will see a very artificially intelligent world in your lifetime in the peak of your careers so i would like to give you three advice number one is make sure that you train yourself in ai friendly job areas so what artificial intelligence will require human beings you know artificially intelligent world jobs that need a lot of creativity you know humanities included in that jobs that need a lot of courage for example a creative fashion designer cannot be replaced by an artificial intelligence at least not in this century so creative jobs will still be done by human beings jobs that require a lot of courage we have our example here of uh, brigadier rawat i don't see the future where the job of a brigadier in the field can be done by artificial intelligence because it is not only about strategy and giving orders it is about having the courage to be able to face the enemy and take the right decisions emotions patriotism emotions around care you know nursing jobs medical jobs healthcare jobs where it is not only about important about what you do but it is also important how you do it the human machine interaction is still a long way away from the emotional quotient that is required to successfully accomplish some of those tasks critical thinking management jobs engineering jobs where you need to critically think analyze and reach conclusions and take decisions because decision making will still continue to be a uh, area of human uh, effort taking risk for example investment banking today i do venture capital investments i have to look at the company look at the startup look at the product look at the market look at the team 
and then bring all of this together and develop a gut feel whether putting money in this company is going to give me adequate results. There is an element of analytics, there is an element of artificial intelligence that can help me make the decision. But still, the final decision of making that risk-based investment has to be a human decision. And those are the things which will be jobs that will be available for the foreseeable future because artificial intelligence will not be able to replace those kind of jobs. And th those are the resilient competencies. Those are the humanities and faculties that you have to build in yourself uh, to be able to be continue doing jobs which are not going to be disrupted by automation. On the other hand, obviously a lot of repetitive jobs, a lot of jobs uh, that don't require value add. You know, a lot of, uh, especially in our region, there are a lot of uh, families who have family retail businesses. They buy goods from Indore or they buy goods from Delhi or Jaipur or Ahmedabad, bring it to Mansoor and Neemach and then sell it over there. The value add in that whole process is very limited. All of those kind of jobs will get disintermediated. Those kind of businesses will all get disrupted by artificial intelligent businesses like Flipkart and Amazon, which will be able to give better uh, human experience. They will be able to get better price because they have volumes with them and they'll be able to do those jobs much better, faster delivery, better prediction, all of the things which is the strength of artificial intelligence. So repetitive work, non-value adding work will all get disrupted and you should be careful in how you uh, position yourself in your career to be on the side of artificial intelligence. As it is always said that, you know, to embrace the future, when you can't fight it, you need to join it. And the largest job opportunities for people like yourselves that will get created is the people, the engineers, the computer scientists, the IT specialists who will write the algorithms for artificial intelligence. Today, more than about uh, 7 million young Indians directly are employed by the IT services industry writing computer programs. We can become the artificial intelligence capital of the world in India because we have so much of young demographics. We have so much of talent, which is good in maths and science, very good in engineering and logical thinking, which can write those algorithms. Apart from writing those algorithms, there's a lot of work around data science, being a data scientist, understanding data because artificial intelligence is nothing without the data. Data is the food on which artificial intelligence feeds itself to become stronger and stronger. And data science is a great area for young people like you to adopt. Today, there is a deficiency across the world in terms of people who can write algorithms in artificial intelligence and people who are data scientists, who understand the domain, who can create what, what is known as the what if questions with the data to be able to digest that data. And then very much like the BPO industry, Feeding data to AI algorithms and testing AI algorithms is going to be a huge industry. Just training of AI algorithms using data so that the AI algorithms become much more smarter before they are put into the field. Just as an example, before Tesla was put uh, into production here in the US, from thousands of cars which were fitted with cameras, data was collected, live road data was collected. And the AI algorithms were trained in the offices of Tesla before even the first class was, first car was put on the road uh, to self-drive itself. Because you need to have all of that data, you need to, you know, steering data of how drivers steer the wheel, how you overtake a car, how you change a lane. All of that data was recorded. All of that data was fed and the algorithms were trained and then those al trained algorithms were put into Tesla and then the first Tesla came on the road to be able to drive and that itself is a big industry. So for you, the choice you have is get worried and say it's going to be the end of the human world because artificial intelligence will take over or you prepare yourself for the artificial intelligent future and that is what I thought I will share with you today. Now I will pause here and I'd love to take any questions 
comments that you may have. Yes, sir. I have one question. Uh, there are CNN machines in the uh, manufacturing and there are robots also. How we have to differentiate for? Uh, can, can you repeat the question? The audio is not clear. Yes, sir. Go to that mic, that will be better. Go to that mic. Yes, sir. Uh, in the manufacturing unit, there are CNN machines and also there are robot or powers. So, how we have to differentiate uh, the CNN machine with the robots? Very good question. Uh, 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 a CNN machine would be able to take an algorithm uh, more like a computer program and do exactly what it has been asked to do. So just as an example, I'll give you a hypothetical example. In a CNC machine, if you feed a wrong data, so suppose you're going to cut a nut for a bolt out of a CNC machine, and the nut has to be an hexagonal nut. And if you say that, look, the six sides have to be one inch long, and in, 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 the, in the material that is being used to generate that uh, nut, when it is trying to cut one inch on all the six sides, because of the nature of the material or because of the nature of the laser beam or because of the nature, nature of the cutter, if there is a 1% or 2% error which is coming in each side, a CNC machine will consistently generate every nut with that same error. It can be within the tolerance limit, but it will generate within the same error. If you use an artificially intelligent robot to do the same thing, it will have a feedback loop. So after the nut is created, it will look at, look at that and say, okay, if I'm doing a brass nut, which is softer than a steel nut, this laser for one inch of programming cuts a steel nut for one inch, but for a brass nut, it ends up cutting it a, a little more because brass is softer. So now when I measure at the output, the artificially intelligent robot would identify and then it will be able to correct the CNC's program to say rather than cutting one inch, cut 1.01 inch. And that will give a much higher level of accuracy to the output. So that's how artificial intelligence kind of uh, impacts uh, manufacturing in robotics. The second level of impact of artificial intelligence is when uh, you do digital printing. Because the traditional CNC machines assume a certain characteristic of material. So the design is based on how you can machine a certain kind of material. With digital printing, you almost have, you're like a kumhar, you almost do pottery. You can make, forge or cast something out of uh, sand or mud. And there the whole process is very different. You know, exactly like a potter will cast a pot. Where a potter sees how is the shape of the pot and the, he is able to adjust on a flywheel. The same thing will happen in digital printing. And that is where artificial intelligence becomes even more important uh, in uh, machining, in manufacturing. Good morning, sir. My name is Rajin Kumar Tiwari. I am from Facebook branch of uh, Mysore City. So my question is how uh, it, uh, AI will affect uh, the uh, uh, education system uh, and how education will change by AI? Great question. I personally feel that AI will have a very big impact on education. The biggest impact will be today when there is a class of 30 people in a school or 100 people in an engineering college, 
a professor comes and gives a lecture the 100 people have different ability to absorb they have different speeds to absorb they have different uh, faculties where they are some people are able to absorb tangible things better some people are able to absorb visual things better some people are able to absorb a uh, numbers written on the blackboard better so everybody has their own way of learning but you need to have one professor teaching the class and professor teaches with his own style or her own style artificial intelligence can actually customize content in education for the optimal absorption of every student so it is called a segment of one in business language so historically most marketing most teaching most sales was done to target segments so first year engineering student is a target segment we know they have passed 12th we know they have uh, done a pre engineering test we know they are roughly 60% 70% uh, uh holders and then the teacher with those assumptions gives them all the knowledge in first year education artificial intelligence will exactly know this was your marks you had very high marks in chemistry but you had lower marks in mathematics you absorb mathematics slowly so when they teach you first year engineering course in material science it will be able to customize that entire education to a segment of one to you mr tiwari directly based on your own ability to absorb and the way you like to learn if you like to learn in the open space if you like to learn with numbers if you like to learn with visual props if you like to learn conceptually if you like to learn reading a book or reading it from the computer it will enable you to do that so number 1 it will customize education number 2 it will increase the reach of education it is like the same example i talked about the oncologist you don't need a lung cancer expert sitting in mansoor to have the best uh, lung cancer diagnosis uh, in mansoor same thing will happen with education you know you don't have to go to harvard business school or you don't have to go to iit to become the best uh, mba or the best uh, engineer the same will become available across in in a much more interactive in a much more uh, 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 customized manner although the need for teachers will never go away because artificial intelligence will always assist teachers it will never replace those teachers because again based on my example what teachers bring is the emotional connect artificial intelligence will never have the dronacharya and the uh, arjun connection right ek love you will you know there is no student who will give a thumb to an artificial intelligent computer so that is where the teachers come in thank you sir good morning sir i am ashish mishra from csc department i want to ask that how can a ai uh, help in a new startup so today every new startup that is coming has to be in one of the technologies that uh, brigadier uh, rawat is uh, introducing to all of you it has to be either in cloud computing it has to be in artificial intelligence it has to be in blockchain it has to be in uh, iot because and all these things while we talk about them as separate subjects the application of this in business all converges together it all comes together and today by definition a startup is a innovative company and an innovative company needs to have uh, elements of all of these technologies within them so so i i would say the default for a startup is artificial intelligence and you know the way you should look at think about a startup with artificial intelligence is look at your day to day problems things that you do on a day to day basis and identify what are the things which are difficult to do and 
can you apply artificial intelligence to do it? And you can create a business out of it. You can create a startup out of it. So the best startups are the ones where students or young people look at a problem that they face in day to day life and say this, there has to be a better way to do it using technology that you learn in college and apply the technology you learn in college to the challenges and difficulties you face in your real life or your parents face or your brothers and sisters or your friends face in the real world and create a business idea. So AI can have both positive and negative impact on the economy and growth of the country. The positive impact will be when the adoption of AI is high and the AI is adopted in the right places. So just as an example, in a country like India, and it is even true for America, but more so in a country like India, adoption of self-driving cars, self-driving trucks, may not be economically a good idea. And that is where governments come into picture, policies come into picture, uh, politicians come into picture, because there's a large amount of economy in India where there is the drivers make a livelihood by driving cars, right? In the US, it's a very good proposition because 99% people in the US, I don't have a driver to drive my car. I drive my car myself. So if I get a self-driven car, it's a great idea because it's easy for me. But when I lived in India, I had a driver. I would always be sitting in the car and having the driver take me somewhere. So in India, a self-driving car may not be good for the economy. So these are the things which uh, there is a lot of uh, thought goes into it. That while technology is available, what is the technology that we want to promote? So I gave you the example of smart cities and, you know, IoT and sensing and facial recognition and crime control and all of those things. Those are very good things for the economy to do in a country like India. And that is where technology should be implemented. Uh, that can upgrade the whole experience of people. But there are areas where you don't want to adopt that technology very quickly until you create alternative jobs. Because one of the things which I worry about AI is artificial intelligence impacts the job at the bottom of the society the most. Because the uneducated, the poor people, the manual laborers are the ones who get disrupted the most by robotics and artificial intelligence. And that is where unless we create avenues for them to do higher end jobs, and then there are a lot of other theories, which I will not go into right now. Theories like uh, universal uh, income or guaranteed universal income and stuff like that, which is in a case where the entire world is run by artificial intelligence and all work is done by artificial intelligence. If the entire farming is done by artificial intelligence, then you will have a lot of crop being grown and you will be able to sell the crop and you'll be able to get the money. Then the computer doesn't need any money or any profit. So then you take that money and distribute it back to the farmers who were originally doing that uh, agricultural work. But that's a completely different social topic, not a technology topic. But to me, in a country like India, the economic impact of artificial intelligence is very, very positive because the biggest impact that we will have is becoming the artificial intelligence capital of the world. The largest number of uh, engineers, technical people, data scientists who will be able to write algorithms for the entire world. If today Indians can do IT for the entire world, today if Indians can do BPO for the entire world, tomorrow Indians will do data science and artificial intelligence for the entire world. And that's a huge opportunity. Just imagine when some of you are too young to be able to imagine that. But when I was in college, the only job opportunities that were available for the most part 
for public sector enterprises. If, if a student will get a job in a, a steel authority of India Limited or a, a NPC or any such public cement corporation of India or any such uh, company, that people were lucky. The rest of the people will either not have a job or they will go into civil services exams or other things. And that time, the number of engineers that were being created in the country were like one hundredth of the number of engineers being created today. Today, with hundred times more production of engineers, look at the amount of job openings that are there because of a very thriving private sector, especially in IT, especially in healthcare, especially in automobile manufacturing and others, because those sectors are not only serving the Indian market, but they are serving the world market. So that's how we look at the new India, where the new India can serve the world. And in artificial intelligence, we can serve the world. And that will be the most positive because these will be very high paying jobs. These will be very much in demand jobs uh, that uh, young people can take and become a global citizen. This will be the last question. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before diving into my question, I would want to acknowledge everybody with the uh, advertisement that I saw uh, most frequently, and that is uh, that a five year old um, a boy was asking uh, his mom, What is two plus three is equal to five? And her mother says, Ask Google. And he would say, Okay, Google, what is two plus three is equal to? And that would give the answer five. So uh, this is good. This is good that we are being surrounded with uh, such simple sim that we can uh, as, uh, we can have take the assistance of robots and AI for asking the simpler questions. But my question is, are we not limiting ourselves with the basic essential skills that we need to learn? For example, uh, I'm I'm really glad that AI is helping in. In almost every sector, but on the contrary, we are also being surrounded by so much technology uh, in a bigger picture that we are uh, even uh, not uh, we are not aware of learning the essential life skills, as you have said about the uh, self-driven cars. So maybe in the future, uh, as what uh, as what my opinion is that that people will rely totally on the robots for driving the car, and uh, and a time will come when people will. Uh, people are uh, not aware of how to drive a car. Maybe that time will come. So, uh, what are the what is the future about it? And my second question is: uh, Living with such close proximity to the AI and machines, how it will impact the health and environment? Thank you, sir. So, you know, in the history of the world, people have forgotten skills that are no longer required, right? So, you know, a very good example is if you watch some of Balraj Sahani's old Hindi movies, there will be a rickshaw puller who will be pulling rickshaw, transporting passengers. A cycle rickshaw or a, a, a rickshaw pulled by a person, right? Today, one can argue that we've forgotten that skill. Today, if somebody has to take two people on a cycle rickshaw or a hand pulled rickshaw, there won't be people who will be able to do it. Because it requires a certain muscle, certain expertise uh, to be able to do it. And it's very difficult to do it. And But it is for the good of the human society that, you know, people have moved on. So there will be skills that we are doing today, which we don't need to do. And then there will be skills, which we need to retain in a certain part of the population, but not everybody needs to do it. And we have to choose that. Just as an example, you know, I gave the example of the oncologist of the lung cancer. To your point, if the robots become so smart that they can always uh, delineate the cancerous tissue in the lung. And tomorrow people stop specializing in lung cancer in medical schools. 
After 20, 30 years, if there is some advancement required in lung cancer, it will not happen because there's no human beings. And artificial intelligence can do what we know today very well, but it will not be able to do the next frontier of cancer treatment. So there will always be a sliver of people who will keep doing that just the way we do today. Not every computer engineer does a PhD. If 100 people enter a computer class, 60 people get into a computer job from the class immediately after graduation. 30 people, 35 people go and do MTech in computer science and do a slightly higher level job. More, they become professors, they may go back to academics and stuff like that. Five people will do PhD in computer science and they will develop the next computer. That's the way of life. So it's never the case where 100% of that skill is lost, but majority of the people don't have to do that anymore and they will lose that skill. There'll be a small set of people who will go much deeper and specialize in that. And they will be continuously driving the next frontiers of that skill. What was your second question? So my second question was that uh, if we are being so close to the uh, technology in a bigger picture way, if we see that, so how does it will, uh, how it will affect your health and uh, mental uh, health too and uh, regarding the environment? So what measures have, have been taken in this in this part of uh, the? These are, very, these are very good questions, but people have to uh, take those measures themselves. So I, I'll just give you an example. Earlier, farmers used to till the land themselves, right? So they used to carry a very heavy uh, tiller in their hands. They used to till the land by their own hand. They used to use animals, bells, they used to come home, eat food and sleep. Today, if a farmer has to sit on a tractor and till his land, in America there are air-conditioned tractors. In India still the tractors uh, you feel hot. There they sit, the cabin is completely air-conditioned. Right? So pasina bhi nahi aata hai But then after the whole day of farming, in the evening the farmer goes jogging because he has to do some hard work. Right? So then it becomes a health choice that you make versus something that you were doing out of necessity. And you have to be very conscious about that. So, you know, the biggest issue that, that is there with uh, uh, computer engineers and computer scientists and people in IT is ergonomics. You know, the whole day we sit on a chair and do the work. Today, we encourage employees to stand and do work. You know, the whole desk can go up and you can stand and uh, do work without a chair. There are now small treadmills that can be put where you are standing and actually you are wa walking while you are doing a Zoom call like this, right? Because you have to continue to be fit. 50 years back, people used to leave the job saying, Are maha to batne ki kursi bhi nahi milti hai. Poore din khade ho ke kaam karna padda hai. Right? Today, companies and HR people in the companies are asking to have standing desks for people to work. So I think mean, these are all personal choices. This is nothing to do with technology. This is what you do has to be done efficiently. What you have to take care of your health, your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your emotional well-being, your spiritual well-being, you have to do it. The only advantage technology gives is that earlier, if you took 10-12 hours to do your job, you had no time left for all the well-being I talked about. Today, using technology, you should be more productive. You should get that job done in 8 hours. 
and leave four hours to contribute towards your well-being in all aspects. That would be my advice to you. Well, thank you very much. Good morning, sir. Sir, myself, Keith Sharma. I am working as a faculty member in CSE department, sir. So, my question is that uh, as pandemic came into our life in 2019, delivering education was a challenging task. So, we adopted new methods to deliver education to the students, sir. Now, we have already adopted these techniques. Now, delivering the next level of finest education to the young technocrats. So, what practices and methods we need to adopt to deliver the next level of finest education to the technocrats? No, I think congratulations to the whole education industry. And, you know, I'm very impressed with what you're doing right now as well of making this whole education virtual. And while it started with teachers teaching students at home instead of they coming to the classroom. But one example here is, you know, when I was a student in uh, my college, I never had a CEO come and talk to me in school, in class. So you're already doing that. You're making talent available, which uh, arguably if uh, Brigadier Rawat would have called me and said, ek ghante ke liye aap Raja aur meri class ko padao. I would have politely said no time nahi hai. or it would be, have been physically very difficult to do that. But it was very easy to say yes, because I can do it virtually. So I think the next frontier, as I mentioned, especially on education is going to be one on one personalization. Right now we have used the power of virtual, but it is still one to many. It's like a broadcast. This power of virtual can be now converted into segment of one. So if you take the example, the best industry to look at it is the media industry. Where when you watch TV, some of you who are old enough will remember Chaya Geet and Chaya Geet will have some seven songs and everybody has to listen to those seven songs. Right? Now with MP3, you can have your own playlist and play the songs that you like. So it's customization, personalization. I think the next frontier of education is customization and personalization. Thank you, sir, for providing the knowledge on the power of artificial intelligence. How automatically repeating tasks in the place using artificial intelligence. How, how artificial intelligence help in healthcare to prevent the diseases. How artificial intelligence programming is different from generalized programming. So it is the last but not the least. So we really feel glad to hear your inspiration points and about your experience on artificial intelligence. Now we call upon Dean Faculty of Engineering, Dr. Pradeep Lashkar, to propose the vote of thanks. Good morning. And, uh... Happy Engineers Day to all of you. So, as we have come to the closing of the session, it is my privilege to give a vote of thanks. Um, first of all, I would like to propose a hearty vote of thanks to our guest and the uh, pride of Malwa, Mr. Abhid Ali Nimajwala, for addressing today's webinar and delivering a knowledgeable session on the impact of artificial intelligence on industry, society, and economics. I would like to thank Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mansour University, Brigadier Dr. Bharat Singh Rawat, Dean Academic Dr. Shalin Sharma, Registrar Ashish Parikh, and uh, uh, Dean uh, Administration, uh, Colonel Anand Kumar, for their support. I would like to thank all the faculty coordinators for making this event a successful event, and uh, I would like to thank management of Mansour University for supporting us to organize such events. And last but not least, I would like to thank all the participants. Without you, all this event would not have been possible. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, all the best, everybody. Thank you. Okay.
So when we have a good number here, 